Hi. Today we're going to show um, a technique called the sleeper, which is actually uh, part of Chin'a, uh, also considered part of Judo and Jiu Jitsu. Uh, it can be used with a takedown or without one, it doesn't really matter. Um, there are two different ways of doing this. Uh, one is uh, used in pain compliance, the other is used to uh, only strangle. You can use the pain compliance technique as a strangulation technique in addition. And the value of the first one, what I'm going to do, is that after striking the neck, you have uh, basically a collapsed spasm throughout your artery that decreases the amount of blood flow to your brain. This allows the person, your attacker, to momentarily stop. And that's a good thing. That type of strike, using the bridge hand of the side of the neck, actually has uh, a lot of value. Um, some people may not want to do it because of uh, certain aspects of liability, but in my opinion, it is a very good technique, especially for a person who, this you have a street person, doesn't know how to fight, uh, just wants to swing. Maybe he's uh, used to his own size and strength, or his own power, but in any case, um, as most of you know, most techniques, as they are, will not work against any kind of experienced fighter. And the reason for that is because of the media. People see this sort of thing all the time, and people who study this do so with the idea in mind of resisting someone who's going to use this particular technique on them. So here we go. This is just going to be a straight punch, although it can be used for a wide haymaker punch. It can be used for just about any type of punch. And the idea here is to not block, but simply parry, sidestep, and move in quickly. So basically, when this person strikes, we're stepping in, blocking here, and strike into the side of the neck with the rich hand as hard as you can. From there, and notice I'm in sort of a 45 degree horse, I'm going to step in behind the person's leg, and from here, bring my hand, notice the grip here, the other hand grip, I'm going to bring this in tight and use the side of my wrist to burrow into the side of the neck. As I bring this person in, I'm going to use his shoulder here to help what's apply on the other side of the neck while I bury my forehead into the side of his head, increasing the pressure and pain on the other side. So from here, this is where we are. Okay, this is what we want to see. We want to push that head very hard. The reason I'm stepping behind is because there's a little takedown in this. So, Let's look at it from the other side. He strikes. One, two. Strike. Here we go. Now, step in, pull in close, butt, and squeeze. From here, all we have to do is step back with this leg and swing. As we lower him down, we follow him the rest of the way here, going into this position here. Notice I'm in sort of a reinforced position here. I've got my little outrigger here, and I'm still providing a great deal of pressure. When he tries to move, I'm going to increase the pressure by pressing even harder on the top of his head with mine and pulling up sharply on the side of his neck. So as he tries to struggle, I come in and increase the leverage and pressure. This keeps him from moving and helps allow him to pass out peacefully. <laughs> I consider this to be a really nice phase. Let him go to sleep. Because once he is asleep, you don't have to worry about it. I always like to end things on that note. I don't like to finish with a stamp trying to knock a person out. Too much effort. I'd rather use a joint lock, a sleeper hold, or something like this. This particular technique is called a sleeper. There's a second way of doing this that's more like a side figure four or naked choke. And again, it starts out exactly the same way. When he punches, we come in here, and instead of striking, we circle all the way through, bring our hand here, and go into a side pinch here. So, as you can see, if we turn around here, this is the position we're in. As a strangulation technique, doesn't work as well. That's up for grabs, it depends on the individual. But the strike has the advantage in increasing pain to the point of forcing compliance. And 
that to me is probably the most important thing to remember. When you look at any technique, they can only be practiced successfully on a compliant partner. Well, in the street, you have a choice. Don't do the technique or make them compliant. The strike provides that necessary incentive to be compliant. So that's our first technique, the sleeper, two different ways of doing it. 